Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that'll do. Much of an introduction do we need here? It's in the title of the video. You know what's going on. One of my all-time favorite online nurseries released their 2024, not 2024. I've been looking at 2024 seed catalogs. Fall availability. And so I did what I do. There were some plants on that list that I had been waiting for and hoping that they would offer for sale this fall. So now I have many, many boxes to open full of plants and share with y'all. Oh, and hey, what's up, Garden French Jeff? How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got all these boxes here from Plant Delights. How could I not be doing great? Was that little screech sound audible? If it was, I'm so sorry. I feel like on this channel, I probably open up two to four different shipments from Plant Delights every single summer so at this point do i need to give a whole rundown on the nursery plant delights juniper level botanical out in north carolina they have an amazing selection of plants that are plants that you don't typically find for sale very easily they usually have things before they'll start showing up commonly at the nurseries i don't know what happened to this box why it's what what happened assuming it's paint we'll just keep saying it's paint if you notice that the boxes are torn apart, that's usually because my name's written on them or the addresses have just been cutting those pieces off. They have an amazing selection of plants, wonderfully detailed website. For, oh, look at that. And things are always so well packaged. Look at how well this plant is secured inside that container. Got the tabs holding it in place. Just push those out or push them back in. No, this is pushing in, that's pushing out. And then the plant just pops right out. Pots are wrapped in plastic, secured in place with rubber bands. I think just about every rubber band I have in this house is probably from Plant Delights. Total, all these boxes, I have a dozen new plants, eight different types. So eight new plants and a few of them, there are multiples of, like this one right here. This is Hedicium Slim's Orange. This is one I've talked about before and I've ordered before and I've wanted to get some more of these. So I ordered three of them naturally. Slim's Orange, about three to four feet tall. They have small little flower heads on them. They're one of the coconillas, cocinillas. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. A ginger I've had very good luck with overwintering here in zone 6B. I have the flaming torches, which are doing wonderfully, but they take up a lot of space. I've wanted to get a few of the slim oranges and spread them around the garden in my various microclimates and see how they would do. So there's one of those three. It's not the ideal time of year for it. I would prefer to get gingers in the ground in the springtime, but the availability on them, of course, isn't going to be as great in the springtime either, right? Because they have to let them pop up and wake up and all that stuff. Look at that. It's a decent sized plant. Oh, it even has a few little buds on it. Can you recognize the foliage? Maybe if the camera were focused, I could have waited to zoom in for it to focus. Same packaging on probably everything that's in here. If anything is different from what I showed with the ginger, then I'll show you all. Hibiscus airbrush effect. I had to say that like five times. My mouth was not working with my brain. This is one of the Mashotos. So it's one of the hibiscus that will die back to the ground during the winter time and completely regrow in the springtime. And it has a, what I think, we'll have to wait and see. It has a few buds on it, so we'll get to see something this year. But what I think is a beautiful flower. It's nice pink, a rich pink that looks like it has some various shades on the inside of the flower. It's an airbrush effect to them, hence the name airbrush effect cannot wait to see that one flower i think it's one that only gets maybe two to three feet tall if i'm remembering correctly which is also nice because sometimes you don't have a lot of space for some of these hibiscus because some of them get absolutely massive most of the newer ones stay on the smaller side i can already tell you both of these these are the other two of those slim orange hidichiums yeah, there's one let's go ahead and pop the other one open hey that one was more stubborn took me a minute to get that one out of the box between the three of these They'll look pretty good. Nice, large, established plants that can be difficult to find when ordering the Hidichium sometimes. They're filled out nicely. I'll give them a good eight weeks to get themselves established, maybe longer. The ground stays warmer longer than the air does. So they still have time, not as much that I'd like them to have, but they still have some time. Oh, there's some cool stuff in here. Some really cool stuff. See what's going on down in there? Yeah, no, not really. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to get these unpacked. It's fairly easy to do because they're inserts that lift right out. And once I have these unpacked, we can have a closer look at them. And there it is. I know they're little. Still lots of filling out and growing left to do. These are all plants that I've wanted for a while. And some of these I've talked about fairly recently in some of my other videos. I'll probably start with those. The first one is a plant that I should not have gotten. I try and avoid ordering plants that I'm not sure where I'm going to put them, but 
I just, I really wanted it. This is a blue pampas grass. That was the laziest attempt at giving y'all the name. Here we go. Blue Bayou is the name of this pampas grass. It is one that stays a smidge smaller. It's supposed to have a nice tight clump to it, tighter than your regular pampas grass. And I just, I miss having pampas grass. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. They need full sun. I don't have many spots in my yard that have full sun anymore, but I'm going to find one of the spots that gets enough light for this and I'm gonna stick it in there and we're gonna make it work. They're beautiful plants. I love the way the plumes blow around in the wind. This one sounds like it has really great shape to it. So I just figured, like, why not? I'm gonna grow it and see what's gonna happen with it. Another one that I talked about in a recent video, isn't this beautiful? It's kind of wild looking, isn't it? This is Euphorbia mercenides. This one's five to eight B. It has a really cool crawling, trailing habit to it. I think trailing might be a better way to describe it. And they have the neat Euphorbia type flower heads on the end of them. I consider this a tropical plant dupe for a burrow's tail gives you a similar effect to what you would get with one of those types of plants. These are great in rock gardens, anywhere where you have crevices and a nice dry spot. These will meander down with these really long, flowy stems on them. That great blue color to them. I think this would be fun to use as a perennial in a perennial succulent container. So these with some sempervivums, some other forms of hardy sedums could look really cool. Have a nice trailer to come over the front. You don't have to replant it every single year. These three back here, they're Peltandra virginica. I have three of these. Zone five, that's what it says right there. I keep getting this one confused with the Typhonium giganteum because I've been doing some reading on that one so that I can report some stuff back to y'all in a different video that maybe will have been out by now. It's a 7-8. This is a 5-8. Plants that have that <laughs> alocasia look to them but can take the colds and that's what these are. Peltandras are typically grown in ponds and bogs. If you have an area in the garden that gets at least part sun and uh, the soil is nice and moist, consistently moist pretty much at all times. These do not like to dry out. These will form up to 36 inch tall, nice clumps of great big arrow shaped leaves. And they give you the look of a tropical alocasia all the way down to zone five. But they need the moisture. They can be grown in a container if you want to set up a bog container, would do fine with that. Since this is zone five, if you live in zone six, you could do that and keep them as a perennial. Probably move into some shelter in the wintertime just to be safe. I have an area where the soil doesn't drain all that well. Sorry, I'm trying to find an angle where the single growths that are on these are visible. There's just not much to see with them. That's okay though, they are quick growers. So I expect by the end of this growing season, these should double or triple in size. And as I was saying, I have an area in the garden that gets a good amount of sun, mostly morning sun, a little bit of afternoon sun, and the soil is pretty moist in that area. I think they'll do well over there. I'm not gonna talk about them too much because one, they should have their own video, which they probably will, not too long after this one comes out, maybe right after this one comes out. And there just isn't all that much to look at yet. They need to put on some size. Because what I do like about them is that every single one of these has a lot of roots coming out the bottom of the pot and they feel very firm, which means that there is a nice size tuber down inside of these containers for these to take off from. That's ultimately what we're paying for with those and they should produce a nice sized plant very shortly. Okay, how about another hibiscus? This one, another machetos. Machetos, machetos, I'm sure you know what I mean. See the leaf shape on this one is just a smidge different from the other one. This one I have wanted for a couple of years and it's not usually available when I place my orders and I actually planted one last year and it got torn up by the dogs. My sister got a puppy, it's a long story. Hibiscus pink teacups. So this perennial hibiscus, just like the other one, die down to the ground every single year. But whereas that last one, the airbrush effect is nice because it's not going to take up a huge amount of space. This one, this one gets big. I think it's 96 inches tall. The flowers on this one are smaller, they're pink and they, point upwards. A fun, unique difference. You know, a lot of these hibiscus types, the perennial dieback type, are ones that just have gigantic disc-like flowers on them, which look really cool. But texturally, I am going to enjoy this, especially since it's 96 inches tall. I have some great spots where I can put that up there on the hill. And it's going to have flowers abundantly, and the pollinators will enjoy it too, from nice and high. That's a nice thing. I live in a bowl basically it's lots of houses uphill from me and i like to plant a lot of things at various heights with lots of different colors to help draw the pollinators in and that will definitely help i'm 
so excited about these. Can you tell just from looking at it right here? Oh, it's so pretty. And this one's pretty cool too. If you don't know what this is, this is an Omorpho Phallus. I decided in the spring of like 2021 that I wanted to start planting more voodoo lilies, whether those are Soramatums or the Amorphophallus, Typhoniums. I want to get more hardy aeroids into the ground, and the voodoo lilies are a really fun, very tropical looking plant to have around. And this one right here is the classic Amorphophallus conjac. But this one is called Leo's Song. Amorphophallus conjac is a very common voodoo lily for zone six, 6B technically. I've had these come back for me every single time I planted them. Never lost them during the winter time. I have lost them to construction and things digging them up and those sorts of things. But the cold, I've never lost one before and I'm here in 6A, 6B, right on the line in St. Louis. What you're seeing here on this Amorphophallus from here all the way up to the top, it looks like a stem or a trunk. This is actually just one really big cool leaf coming up from a singular bulb down below. And voodoo lilies, if you don't know, produce a single inflorescence per tuber that's down in there that comes up, looks really cool. These have really awesome looking flowers on them and they smell horrible <laughs> to attract flies. This smells only bad for like a day or so, so that's not something I really care about. I grow the Amorphophallus because of the really neat foliage. These will fill in an area and kind of naturalize themselves or they don't really spread around. Though they can depending on what type you're growing. They look so neat when they get going and get moving. The Leo song is different from the regular konjac in that it just has a different colored, I keep on calling it a stem, not a stem, the base of the leaf. It's an ivory with black speckling in it. Everything else about this plant is the same as just a regular cone jack. And the area where I want to put these is somewhat tucked away, so I thought having more of a light color on what appears to be the trunk, even though we know that's not what it is, will help draw the eye back into that area and so it'll stand out better. Classic voodoo lily, highly suggest them. Doesn't have to be the Leo song, just a regular cone jack, really neat one. It's a fun one to grow. Last one. This is a very special plant that I really debated ordering. I went ahead and I got it. Obviously, it's here on the table. I have some explaining to do with this one. First, let's just talk about how beautiful those nice big couple of leaves that are coming up there. They're so nice. I'm nervous to talk about this one. Can you see what's going on up here? has some variegation in it. This one is Amorphophallus konjac shattered glass, 6A to 10B, so it's a little bit more hardy. And this one goes 60 inches. I have really neat looking plants with these. What's interesting about this one is it's variegated, but apparently only sometimes. The variegation on this one is supposed to be pretty unstable. So some years you may have beautiful variegation on the gigantic foliage of these plants. Other years, maybe not. Since these are just one leaf, it's not something where you can cut it back and just wait for more variegation to come up. What comes up, you need to take care of, right? You can't just go chopping away at it. That's it, that's all they put up for the year. That's what's gathering the energy to send back down to produce the really cool flowers that these get on them. But the thinking with this one was the same as with the other one, which is that, hey, some variegation in that area where these are going to be tucked away and maybe not as, Dandy Audi, that's not, uh, there's gotta be a better way to say that. Not as noticeable. Having some lighter colors and tones mixed in with them would look really neat. It was rather pricey, but the larger size, 60 inches, that's a really big voodoo lily, like really big. That alone had me drawn to it. The variegation, I was like, well, that's just a bonus, having the variegation on there. And overall, it's just a cool looking plant. And it's going to look awesome when this thing takes off and it actually is 60, I mean, just imagine that, 60 inches tall. And like I said, they have amazing flowers on them. I think the cone jacks usually go 24 to 30 inches, maybe 36 inches just on the inflorescence, which that alone is amazing. Then you factor in the really cool foliage, just awesome plants. Cannot wait to see all of these take off and start to do some growing. I'm going to be planting these up on camera in a different video, not everything all at one time, but maybe in a, it will have been a vlog or something like that, I don't know. I'm just happy to be able to be getting my voodoo lily garden going again. The last one I had 
died when a magnolia tree was removed. I've got some cleaning up to do over here. There used to be a very large, I think it was a Jane or Suardia magnolia over here between these two bananas came up to the peak of that garage. It had to get cut down several years ago and that's where I had my cone jacks underneath it. And the change in the sun was too much for them. I moved them, but it was just not the right time of year. They didn't make it. And then 2020 happened and you know, it's just life. So here we are a few years later, getting that ball rolling again. I have a gorgeous space up here on the hill where there's nice filtered light for them in a drier shade where I think they will be very happy. Oh, and here are the flaming torches. I was talking about the Slim's Orange earlier. Here's what the flaming torches look like. Similar, but much, much, much bigger. Very big. The flowers are bigger. It's a, more of a tropical vibe than what we're probably getting from those little ones. But I really just wanted to place them around and see how they do during the winter time because not everybody has space for gigantic clumps of hedichiums in their backyard. And if you don't, then the Slim's Orange would be a great option. And that is everything. How did, was this, I hope it was fun. This was pressured filming. Didn't have time to plan anything out. Just, okay, the boxes are here, gonna lose light. Gotta get the camera out, start talking about the plants. Comment down below, say hi. Give me your favorite plants. You've been ordering from Plant Delights. Ready for your fall orders, some stuff you might be doing with your gardens. Some of your favorite types of Amorphophallus or Soromatums or Typhoniums. Other hardy aeroids, Voodoo Lilies. Peltandras, there's a purple one that looks really cool with that Peltandra. Or the hardy hibiscus. I could go on and on and on. Just say hi, I love talking to everybody. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.